These silicone molds produce extremely high quality parts and they're so easy to make. In this video, we'll share how we made these molds, give you pro tips, and demonstrate how to use them with Injecto 2.0. Let's get started. Like most of our projects, let's begin with Fusion 360. We think it would be cool to mass produce this complex piece from our DIY wire EDM machine that we posted on YouTube last year. The first step is to split the design and place each half on a base. Note that this here is what we're trying to design. It has these round features, which simply said are used as locating features that help the two halves of the molds align when closing. To make these, let's just design four spheres in the corners and combine them to the base. These designs are now complete and look good, so we're ready to send them to our Elegoo Saturn S resin 3D printer. Now we start to print and two hours later we have these high resolution plugs for our mold making project. We also print the box on an SLA printer and once done we remove the support structure, clean it and let it cure. When we combine both of these we get a cavity inside that ultimately makes this, one half of the final mold we want to make. In order to make both halves of the mold we need to proceed with both of our plugs. To make it, we first need to bolt together the white mold to the box and place them on a table with the pouring holes facing up. Now let's grab our RTV silicone that we got online along with the hardener. We also need a scale and a cup to measure our material and as always safety goggles and gloves to avoid accidents. We begin by pouring in the RTV silicone which is this white gooey material that has the same consistency as Elmer's white glue. We continue to fill the cup until we get to about 320 grams. Now we need to add the hardener. The instructions call for one tenth of this blue hardener by weight which in this case is about 32 grams. Once we start mixing, we have a total of 15 minutes before this starts to harden, so we have to work quickly. Two minutes later, the liquid is ready to be poured directly into the molds. We found the best way to do this is using a funnel, as trying to pour directly from the cup can leave you with a mess. We're going to let this drip down the funnel until we see it fill up this hole. We want to let it slowly travel over the surface of the mold because then it pushes out any air instead of trapping bubbles inside. We'll show you what we mean in a bit. For now, we also repeat the same process with the other mold. Now, when you pour with the cup, you never want to scoop out anything at the end because the edges of the cup may have unmixed material which can ruin the quality of your final part. You can see that the blue silicone is already starting to work its way up, so now we can just leave these to dry and once hardened, we can very easily clean the spills. Also notice these air bubbles coming out. This is what we were referring to earlier and is exactly what we want to see. This ensures that our final part will have a very smooth finish. After about 8 hours, these become fully hardened. As mentioned, the silicone doesn't stick to anything and just peels right off, so it's really easy to clean our table and funnel. Now we're going to open it up and see what we got. But right before we do that, we'd like to thank FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Every innovation we make starts with hours of sitting and working at a desk making CAD designs we're proud of, and when we prototype, we rely on a sturdy desk to support our work equipment and machines. We recently got the new E7 Premium Standing Desk from FlexiSpot and we absolutely love it. The ability to elevate our desk and stand while working has been an absolute game changer. The E7 features a sleek programmable control panel and we also got the add-ons like this slim under desk drawer, this sturdy dual monitor arm and a cable management tray for all those messy wires. Another great benefit of this desk is its affordable price. This desk can support up to 440 pounds with an uplift weight capacity of 335 pounds. This means it can support Injecto and myself while we can remain confident that the surface will stay steady. Just look at how still this glass of water remains as we work on the desk. FlexiSpot provides all kinds of standing desk and ergonomic chairs to meet your needs. If you want a premium standing desk, you can check their E7 Pro C-Frame, or if you're on a limited budget, you can choose the E2 model which only costs $140. Don't forget to use promo code YTB50 for $50 off orders over $500. And now, back to the video. Depending on your design, it could be easier or harder to pull out the silicone. 
One trick we use is to screw in a bolt in the opposite direction and use it as leverage to separate the two parts. As you can see, all the air bubbles travel to the top, which doesn't affect our part as the most important thing is that no air was trapped inside. But if you do have a vacuum chamber, you can also degas the liquid silicone before pouring it just to be safe. We chose not to do that in order to demonstrate that this can be done without the use of any unique or expensive equipment for anyone working on a budget. Removing the part reveals a smooth finish with almost no flash on the side, which means that our super high tolerance prints between this and this were very good. You can also see the details in the mold, which is why we use an SLA printer instead of FDM. We quickly repeat these steps for the next parts as well. You can see that no silicone went in here, which is where we will eventually pour material into. Now, remember these little divots that we created? Well, note how there's the inverse on the other mold, so these are going to close like this and line up perfectly. And we also have the same design on the black box. When we close them, we're going to have the perfect cavity of exactly the part we want to make. So let's bolt these together and go on from there. These might be a little too long, but they'll do the trick. Close it until the seam is sealed, which means that the silicone is pressed against itself, and now we're ready to inject through here. As a note for those with FDM printers, you can also use FDM to create these backings which seems to work pretty well but we highly recommend using an SLA printer to get these high resolution prints. We're going to be testing this mold with two different materials. First, with a two-part liquid plastic, and the second is using Injecto 2.0. But instead of the normal ABS plastic, we're going to experiment with hot glue. The first option requires our handy little kitchen scale, two cups, and of course, the actual material to be used, which is this two-part polyurethane resin. We start off by measuring part A, followed by part B. Now if you look at the bottle, part B is the resin, and part A, the more brown one, is the hardener. Adding the hardener to the resin first helps ensure a thorough and even mixing of the two components. Now, our working time is only two and a half minutes. The way this is going to work is we're going to mix the two parts and pour them into the little hole guided by a syringe. We'll also set up a timer to keep us on track. Let's go. As soon as we add part A to B, it's really gonna start heating up, especially at these quantities, so you want to start mixing as soon as possible. We're going to mix for about 25 seconds before pouring into the mold. So we're getting close, and you can start seeing a very uniform consistency. Ideally, we don't want to spill, but the most important thing is that the mold cavity gets filled up all the way. When the syringe empties out, we can top it up with the remaining mix, and then plunge the remaining liquid inside the cavity until we see it squirt out the other hole. After about 20 minutes, we can crack open the mold and see our result. Wow, it's looking really good. The sides are smooth and took the perfect shape. We've got some bubbles here, and again, if you want to get rid of the bubbles, you would have to degas the liquid prior to pouring. The threads on this part right out of the mold are also really accurate and can even be used with these metal threaded fittings. And now, on to our favorite machine, the one and only Injecto 2.0, this incredible desktop sized plastic injection machine. To get started, we just select our desired temperature. In this case, we'll be melting hot glue, so we need a temperature of around 160 degrees Celsius or 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the glue is melted, we can insert our mold into the nozzle, raise the scissor lift, and immediately inject. The red button forces the injection ram down, while the green button brings it back up. When we take the mold out, we can see that the hot glue came out of both holes, meaning that the cavity is completely filled and this was a successful injection. Now, hot glue does take a while to cool, but after some time, opening up the mold revealed a perfectly injected hot glue part. We were super impressed by the quality, especially with hot glue since it's such an easily accessible and easy to work with material for prototyping. So there you have it. If you're interested in buying an Injecto 2.0 kit, visit actionbox.ca. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.